coming to a, getting closer to yeah. <laughs> I like to be sitting in the satin and watching. <laughs> I like it, but it's yeah, like you have to do it. And I enjoy watching it. Getting to know the people. Western Educational Broadcasting Authority. Uh, today is April 3, 2024. It's 10.30 a.m., the scheduled time for the meeting. Uh, so I will call the meeting to order. I'm Bill File, the chairman of the Western uh, Educational Broadcasting Authority. Uh, we have several people on by phone today, or, or on, they're on the Zoom call. Um, I know we have Danielle Waltz is on, and Tim Consett, Carol Rotrut, Nancy White, and uh, Commissioner Randall Reed Smith. And we have here at the table, I'll just start to my left. Mike, if you identify yourself. Mike Farrell, a representative of the Higher Education Policy Commission, Vice Chair of this committee. Good morning. I'm Elliot Hicks. I'm the Chairman of the Friends of Public Broadcasting. Uh, Greg Thomas, uh, board member. Good. Frank Wood, board member. Christina Dodd, West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Eddie Heitz, I'm West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Thank you all for all being here. We, uh, we actually have good attendance today. We have uh, one one uh, former member of the Education Broadcasting Authority, Tom Sussman, uh, resigned yesterday. So uh, he will not be obviously joining us this morning. But I do want to thank publicly Tom for all the uh, time and effort he put in. Uh, he was a very valuable member for the several years that he served on our authority. Uh, served on the executive committee, met with us every Wednesday morning, and um, and really, I thought, did an outstanding time, or outstanding job um, in trying to further public broadcasting. He was a true advocate of public broadcasting, and um, so I just want to thank him publicly for all the time and effort he put in. Uh, we will follow the um, agenda that I believe each member of the authority had uh, previously been provided. Uh, we'll start with the first order of business would be the uh, approval of minutes. We have two, uh, two minutes to be approved. One, the first would be the December 6, 2023 regular meeting of the authority. And the second one will be the February 27, uh, 2024 special meeting that was held. Um, I think each member of the authority has received in advance a copy of these minutes. And I would ask if there are uh, any revisions to be made to the minutes, and if not, could could we entertain a motion to could we approve the vote? Make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve both sets of minutes. We have, a, we have a second to the motion. Any second. discussion of the motion? Uh, there being none, call a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Uh, the, the minutes uh, of both meetings are approved. Uh, next will be the EBA financials. Um, Tammy Treadway 
do with our long-term treasurer and CFO uh, retired and since our last meeting. In fact, her last day was this past Friday. She retired at the end of March uh, after 37 years of service to public broadcasting. And we certainly thank Tammy for all the time and effort she put in. She did, did a great job, and uh, she will be best. But uh, we have uh, in her place that I believe Sarah Pitzer uh, is going to give us the report on the financials. Sarah? Hello, good morning. Um, you all should have a copy of the financials. Um, if you don't, um, just look off of another person. But um, today I'm going to go over the financials um, ending March 31st of 2024. Um, I'll start with the cash balance. We had a cash balance of $10,084,000 at the end of March. And then moving into revenue, um, you can see that our federal funds um, are zero for now, and that is because we spent all of our repack money in the previous fiscal years. Um, we've received all of our CPB grants. Um, we got a slight amount higher this year. Um, our state government appropriation is down a little from last year, but that's just because of the timing of expenses and how we recognize the revenue. Um, underwriting and membership are down a little bit, but um, I've gotten with Maryland, and we're going to look over that. And then our contributions and endowments um, are significantly higher because there was a large donor for a transmitter in Elkin. And then our mountain stage and other income are both up a pretty good amount for this year. Are there any questions on the revenue? Does anybody have any questions uh, on the revenue? Apparently not. Okay. And I'll move into the expenses. Um, our salaries and benefits are lower, and that's due to the fact that we have several open positions. Um, one of our largest expenses is our contracts and professional services, and that's down due to um, the repack being finished, so we aren't using those as much. Um, the program rentals is another large expense that we have, and it is at about $1.3 million for this year. Um, our Promotions are up a lot, and that's because we've been increasing our marketing efforts. And then our repairs and alterations are up significantly, and that's because Tyler, before he left, was buying a lot of things to replace, and he was using our CARES and ARPA money for that. Are there any questions on the expenses? Anybody have any questions or any comments tonight? Apparently, apparently not, Sarah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for your report. Um, I would ask for a motion to accept the report that Sarah just presented. If we could have a motion, please. Thank you. We can make some motion. We have a second to the motion. Second. Frank Wood seconds. Uh, any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Same sign. Okay, the, uh, the, the report by Sarah is accepted. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Thank hey, you. Bill? Yes. That's uh, Carol. I just want to point out that you all keep cutting out frequently. Uh, it doesn't last for a real long time, but the sound is cutting out. I don't know what the issue is, uh, but just so you know that. Okay. What are we speaking into? That's why I moved the book. Why don't you move it closer? Yeah. Okay, um, can you hear me better now, Carol? Yes, it, it wasn't that we couldn't hear you, and it wasn't just me. <laughs> okay, uh, right. Totally cutting out. So, anyway, hopefully that will take care of it. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, the, uh, the next item on the agenda that we are following would be the uh, report by the friends of West Virginia Public Broadcasting, and Elliot Hicks, their chairman, is present. Elliot? Yeah, our report is short today. We are beginning a fund drive on April 12th, and uh, it'll be uh, it, it'll be at various times then, not one of the constant things that uh, had been done in the past. Um, otherwise, that's uh, all we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. As you said, it's a short report. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like that. Yeah, well, we can't get over that long. Yet, 
Does anybody have any questions of Elliot? If not, we'll move on to the report by Mike Farrell, the chairman of the West Virginia Public Broadcasting Foundation. Mike? Thank you, Bill. Obviously, the uh, foundation, along with this board, has been very interested and active in uh, understanding the new legislation. Uh, as the chairman of the foundation, I've had multiple meetings uh, with our secretary, uh, Randall Reed Smith. I've been assured that uh, things will proceed as they always have. I take him at his word. I have no reason to believe anything other than that will happen. Uh, the funds that the foundation holds and administers and distributes uh, will remain independent of the state treasury. Uh, currently, we have two funds. The television fund has $2,313,000. $175. The radio fund has $1,662,874. And as I think most of you are aware, most of that money comes from uh, donors to estates and has been long held money. We've been blessed uh, that Linda Goldberg, who is present uh, in the room with us today, is uh, agreed to serve with me on the investment committee. Uh, we recently had a meeting in March where we reviewed the portfolio uh, for these funds, uh, identified two investments that were stagnant. Uh, we have sold those uh, and replaced them with uh, funds that are earning over 5% interest, and uh, we are more actively looking at it. Uh, we undertook a, a survey of financial advisors across the state of West Virginia to determine uh, if there was anybody who had new or innovative ideas that would stimulate us to change advisors. Uh, at this point, we have stayed uh, on an interim basis with our existing advisor uh, and with the investments we have, quite frankly, uh, we're not in equities, we're not in bonds, we're not doing anything uh, particularly risky, we're in Vanguard. Uh, so Linda and I and the investment committee are going to stay the course and uh, try to plump up these funds to uh, look and see if there's anything better we can do with it that bears very little risk but uh, portends to uh, uh, show an opportunity for profit. Uh, I think the foundation uh, will continue to be successful. We have had a letter this past month uh, that there is an estate that's a uh, dwindling or exhausting estate, uh, and we are the residual beneficiary. It all depends upon this one person who is living out of that trust. So that may be a zero when it became the residuary uh, entity. Uh, there was a million dollars. It's down to $158,000. Uh, so we'll keep you up to date as to whether or not anything comes from that. Otherwise, uh, we are administering the grants. Uh, we have applied for uh, grant uh, with the Cargill Foundation that uh, has been with us for some time in the amount of $600,000 for this coming year, and uh, we are meeting with them to, they have asked about the new legislation, and Eddie and myself and the Secretary will be meeting with them April 15th, is that correct, yes. Eddie? Uh, so we look forward to that session. Are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions of Mike? If not, thank you, Mike. And Linda, thank you very much for, for helping there. We appreciate that. Um, that takes us to the next item on the agenda, which will be the executive director's report. Um, the interim executive director, Eddie Ison. Oh, old business. I'm sorry. I <laughs> skipped right through that. Um, is there any old business to, uh, to come up? As noted on the agenda, I had asked uh, that we 
get a report of each board meeting on the percentage completion for the audit items. And uh, even though Tammy Treadway has retired, she has agreed to assist us as needed and bring her 30 years of experience. Uh, that's always that intersection of time and resources and potential problems uh, that gets a lot of attention throughout uh, the hierarchy of state government. So uh, I don't want the board to be in a position, particularly in a year where Tammy retires, that we come up short. So right. uh, that is continuing old business every time as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and so I'll just add that we are probably 65 to 70 percent finished with um, the issues that were brought up in the audit. The biggest thing Tammy and I worked out um, was was the proper procedures for purchase orders, um, and that was that was a huge issue last time. So that employees are now following that procedure. We are refusing to pay anything until we see a purchase order and an invoice. So. Um, no more purchasing and then putting purchase orders in later. Um, the next thing that Sarah is going to start doing is working with AmeriCo on the grant issues that came up, and th those those were kind of minor. Was, was I am I right? Correct. Right. Yeah. And and also no duplications of payments. We actually had some duplications of payments uh, that the audit pointed out. Right. They weren't actually paid twice. It's just when they were recorded in our book. Yeah, so we've, we've gotten, going through the bookkeeping processes, and we've tightened those up a lot. Um, so we're getting ready to, you know, the next week school year starts July 1st. Tammy has agreed to work part-time with us, um, and we're going to start working on the stuff for the audit probably at the beginning of the fiscal year, July 1st. What time does the audit usually actually get? It's late, it's like later in the, that we get the actual report there. Do you remember? Um, usually it has to be. By October 5th. Yeah, so we, you know, we'll start beginning almost immediately June, July 1st to get ready for our submission in October. Sarah, do you see any hurdles that you're going to need to clear, or does everything appear to be in order right now? I think that we're making good progress on having it in good shape. Okay. And if you would certainly keep Eddie, obviously, advised. Each, each meeting, I thought, we, I thought you were taking line. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you give me a line also. <laughs> easier to keep him advised than a line. Does anybody have any questions of, uh, of what we were just discussing? Thank you, Mike, for bringing that up. Uh, next would be new business. Uh, I don't know of any action items or any. New business right now that we need to discuss. Does anybody have any new business that anyone here would like to uh, to bring up? Apparently, there being none, that will take us to the executive director's report and the interim executive director, Eddie Ice. Well, Eddie, thank you all very much for being here today. And we, we have a lot of great stuff that we have been working on that I want to tell you all about today. The, the biggest one for me is hope and healing. So this is. Um, a video project that Maggie Holly and our education department work with their video production department on. And we gathered um, teens together and we wanted them to talk about things that were challenging to them. You know, and, and these kids talked very candidly with us. And they talked about, you know, drug abuse that they see, uh, mental health challenges, you know, how social media affects their lives and how the pressure they feel at a, such a young age to pick who they're going to be when they grow up. And um, we are going to have a special screening for this video project um, April 23rd at 5.30 p.m. at the University of Charleston. I have actually printed invitations that I'm going to hand out to everybody before you leave. We would like to get as many people as possible to go here uh, to this. And then we will broadcast it the following Monday at 9 o'clock and, and also stream it on our, all of our platforms. But the big thing about this project that, that came out of it was um, we had it was it was done with our partnership with the West Virginia Drug Intervention Institute. They were partners in this production, and they came to see it. And just the reaction on their face after they saw how powerful um, this project is going to be, and the fact that we're going to be able to put this in the school systems. Um, Maggie's working to get it to guidance counselors, school administrators, the State Board of Education, and she is putting together resources 
that will go along with this. And, and, and I, I just want to emphasize that this is the kind of project that educational broadcasting does. Uh, we bring our media folks together, our education folks together, and we create things that, that have meaning and have impact on people's lives. And I'm very proud of this project, and um, I'm, I'm hoping that we have a lot of people come out to this screening. Another thing that education's been working on, you'll see on your table a Books with Buddies um, project. So what they're doing is they, they got grant money for the nor northern part of the state. We wanted to try to expand it at some point, but we're able to give book, free books to kids. And along with those free books, they get a buddy, a little stuffed animal. And it's all about encouraging kids to read. Um, you know, literacy is such a huge part of the PBS kids, um, a, a, you know, programming that we air every day here on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. We have given away over 250 books so far, um, so that's really great. Um, another thing I want to talk about is we had some student journalists that joined us for the legislature today. There's a card on here if people would like to take this home with them and scan the back. Um, ben and Amira, um, they did stories about the legislative process and it aired every Friday during the legislature today. And it, it was an educational moment, not only for the kids to learn how the, how the legislative process actually works, but also for many adults who have forgotten how the legislative process works. You know, they, they talked about committees. You know, they talked about the difference between the House and the Senate. They talked about budgets. They talked about all the branches of government. So we were really, we were really happy that we were able to add this to our broadcast that happened. Um, during the week, and um, we hope that the, the students that worked on this project that we had an impact on their lives. They have told us that they ha that we did, and so when they go off to college and stuff, I hope they remember the, the experience they had with us here at West Virginia Public Broadcasting. And the other thing that that we're getting ready to do, we ceremony on May 4th, but uh, Maggie's finishing up the writers contest. We do that every year. That's also sponsored by the West Virginia Drug Intervention Institute. They've been a great partner with us this year. Uh, we have had, we got a bunch today. We have 177 entries so far. So that's going to be a lot of reading and judging for you all. Marshall judged the majority of them. Yeah, we have Marshall. students from Marshall that help us with that. So video production, we're moving ahead. We have several projects that we're working on right now, including a documentary on Joel Huffman. If everybody remembers who that is, that used to, was Mr. Cartoon. And he had a great impact here on West Virginians. Um, we're fin we're how, how, how far along are we on that, Chris? We have uh, three more key interviews to do. And then, and then we'll start principal editing. Okay. Um, we have a Black History Month project um, that we've been working on. We are consulting with a professor um, about this, and we what we want to do is explore all all the Black West Virginians and their impact that they've had here in West Virginia, um, just so that they're not forgotten. We want to bring all of that together in one documentary, and it's going to take a couple of years for us to get that together. And we are brainstorming America 250 um, to go along with Ken Burns. Two years from now, we'll have um, one of his, you know, great um, documentary series about the American Revolution, and we want to do some local stuff, uh, West Virginia. I know we were Virginia at that time, but our role in the American Revolution. So those are upcoming projects along with many others that our video production department is working on. But Mountain Stage, you'll see on your table, um, we have an album. We have an actual album, and it's going to be vinyl. That's coming out on April 19th, um, celebrating our 40-year anniversary live on Mountain Stage, Outlaws and Outliers. Um, it's it's going to feature... Wilco, uh, Rhiannon Giddens, um, Margot Price, John Prime, Jason Isbell, Indigo Girls, Tyler Childers, et cetera, et cetera. And we're really excited about this. We've had some early releases of some of the singles. They're getting play on radio in other markets other than public media, um, bringing you know, a lot of attention to us. And we're, we're really excited about that. And that will came, come out on April the 19th. And speaking of Mountain Stage, next show is Sunday. April 21st, and they'll be in Athens, Ohio, because they do they do travel so that not only do we bring people to Charleston when we have the Charleston shows, but we bring West Virginia to other communities, you know, to show them who we are and record our shows there as well. And we are broadcast on other stations across the United States. Our broadcast journalism department, 
uh, just came back with 12 awards. I got to get these out here, um, which we were very, we were very, very proud of them for this. Um, among those awards were first place and second place for best podcast audio, um, second place for best continuing news coverage, first and second place for best light feature, and those were. Program. Those, those stories were aired in our Inside Appalachia program. Um, second place for one-person band reporting, which a lot of reporting now is one person, but second place. Best question and answer interview, first and second place. Best mountain stage heritage stories, first and second place. And this is my favorite. We got first and second place for excellence in public service through journalism. Uh, so we can really thank our, our all of our journalists for, for bringing those home and you know showing that we do great work here at West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Um, Liz is on right now, but we're working on a really great thing with our digital products. Um, so digital, for, for those of you know, that's our website, Mountain Stage and our website, um, our mobile app, our social media accounts, and Liz is working um, with with, with uh, people to create a dashboard that will bring analytics for all of our digital products into one place so that we can measure our impact that we have a lot like we do with Nielsen ratings for our broadcast. So it'll be easier for us to see it and it'll be easier for us to, to analyze, you know, places where we need to improve. And this is so important since, you know, we continue to move into this digital age of streaming things. And so it's important for us to start measuring that impact and having all of that in the one place. Um, as Mike told you, we're, we are applying for another six, $600,000 um, grant through the Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies for our Folkways project that would bring us into three more years. Um, and a lot of those stories that, we, that I've talked about in these awards were done by these storytellers that we have brought on board through this program. And we've also applied for a 3.7 million federal grant because we have some tower infrastructure needs that we still continue to need to improve here in West Virginia. So we're, we're waiting on that. And then finally, just talking about membership, Elliot told you, um, we're getting ready to do a fund drive, but we're down about 280 donors compared to last fiscal year, but the percentage of our sustaining members continues to grow. So as of the end of March, we've had we have 56.41% of the people who contribute to West Virginia Public Broadcasting do that on a monthly basis, whether than a one-time gift. And that, all of that together, those people who are, who, are, who are making those donations to us, that comes to about two million of our budget. So it's a, it's a substantial amount that we need to do things like pay for the program that Sarah was talking about, you know, the program rentals, of the national program, that they, they are the ones who help us pay for that by making contributions to West Virginia Public Broadcasting. And that's the end of my report. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I brought up? Great anybody work. have any questions? Great work. Good stuff. This is great it, it, right yeah. here. It, if you can win one award, <laughs> the last one you mentioned, yeah. that's what you want. Yes. Yeah. Public service. Go ahead, Carol. Um, what the 280 uh, donors that you've lost, what percentage of uh, of your fundraising is that? Um, it's it's a comparison with how many we had at the end in, in March of last year. So we look at those donor counts every month, and there's an ebb and flow to them, and. Um, we have uh, 11,500, something like that, yeah. in members. So 280 isn't a lot, but what I, we're hearing in public broadcasting throughout the system, it's hard to replace. That's what we're struggling with. Um, but the good news, as Eddie said, we have even more sustainers than we did last year. And that's, it's a higher percentage, but it's also in headcount. It's a higher headcount. So that's good news about it. 
Yeah, and more a, a lot of those people, Carol, that we that we lose, they they move to out of state. A lot of them. That, would you say, Marilyn, that's the biggest percentage of our loss, mostly? It, it seems to be because we're just we're just losing population, and there's a direct correlation between listenership, viewership, and membership, and that as West Virginia has contracted, yeah. that's been part of our situation. Thank you. Hey, I have said this in this forum, the foundation <clears throat> forum, I'll repeat it. We don't do as well as we should in promoting our successes. Correct. Okay? You've got fabulous awards. You've got other ones you've received. We ought to, on both radio and television, have bumper spots in between the segments where we tell the world we did this and we put it in context. We are educational broadcasting. That mission is our mission. Nobody else has it. What we are doing, what Maggie has done, with this program we'll have at University of Charleston and then on the air is the heart and soul of touching our youth and giving them an opportunity to see that is not dark and despairing, but that we're listening. And that ought to be a circulated email to anybody in state government. We plan health and human services, Department of Education, legislature, executive branch, that we're out there having that kind of conversation. With regard to black history, whoever's doing that, make sure that they interview Cicero Fain. Cicero is a professor at Marshall. He is working with us. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's our consultant. Uh, yeah, first project without it. Yeah. When I was interim president of Marshall, I had my own television interview show. Cicero was my first guest yeah. and my best guest yeah. <laughs> because he is an intellect. He's just a great human being, uh, and he can tell the story that few people who reside in the state can tell. Yeah, he's going to be a consultant on the project. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Any other uh, comments or questions of Eddie? If not, thank you, Eddie. We appreciate what you're doing. And uh, I want to say a couple things quickly here. One is I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that there are changes. We all recognize that there's some issues that ha have occurred recently. Uh, some bills have been passed that do alter uh, to a certain extent the way we are formed. Um, Mike and I have had numerous conversations with the curator. Um, we feel that we're going to get through this. We've been assured that things are going to basically remain as is. Um, jobs are going to remain the same. We're going to continue to have the support from the legislature. Uh, we're going to work hard to keep public broadcasting advancing. Um, we are in the best shape we've been in in years. We've got some of the best personnel we've ever had here. We've got tremendous, uh, tremendous people working here. And... Public broadcasting belongs to all of us, and we expect the public to continue to support us. I think they will. Uh, that's critical to us. We expect the legislature to continue to support us, and we're going to do everything we can to keep public broadcasting moving forward. Uh, I, I think, and I don't want to speak for Mike, and he can certainly pitch in in, in just a minute. Uh, I think we're going to be okay. Randall has assured us uh, and on numerous occasions uh, that that things are going to work out, that it's going to be um, public broadcasting that we can all support. We, we don't want to see people drop off and, and just walk away from us. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, if anybody here, any employees have issues, <laughs> bring them to Eddie, and Eddie will bring them to Mike and myself, and, and we'll work through it, and we'll certainly work with Randall. Randall is going to to be very involved. His office is going to continue to be involved, as it has been. Uh, but I don't want people to think that, uh, that that we're not paying attention to what's going on. We do recognize that. And, and it is important that we continue to have 
the efforts from each of the staff members here, uh, the awards that were won, that, that's tremendous. That, that shows us right there the, the good work you all are doing. We knew you were doing good work, but this confirms it. Uh, you know, just watching what the legislature today showed this past uh, winter, I mean, that was first class. I thought they did an excellent job. Uh, I think Eddie's doing a super job as the uh, executive director. And so I'm encouraged. I think I know it's been a difficult period. I know there's uncertainty. We're going to work through all that. And we're going to come out where we're going to be stronger, hopefully, than we've ever been. Uh, we're committed to it. And I, and I hope all the employees will remain committed. Uh, you all are what makes public broadcasting for us. And I don't think there's any other state public broadcasting or any state that has public broadcasting that has a better group uh, of professionals working than we have. And the product you all put out is second to none. And so I'm, I'm very encouraged with the way you all are addressing the issues, the way, the way you're moving forward. And I ask Mike, do you have anything you want to pitch in? I do. Um, change in a lot of minds as it was evolving was a concern that we're going to step back, <clears throat> that we are going to be less than we were before and somehow in peril. I have spent hours since that bill passed. I'm persuaded that change is an opportunity for us to expand our influence. I have had multiple conversations with Randall. He has new clout as secretary. He's got access to resources. Uh, he is working in our best interest. We're going to hold him accountable to do that. That's the pledge he's made to us. Um, I have said to him multiple times, Maggie needs more people. She needs more money because just look at this table. Look at this invitation you're going to get. Look at the impact that she's making on the educational community. It is disproportionate to anything you might have imagined when we hired her. She didn't come with a background for doing this. She had been in the school system, but she's got the creativity, the leadership, that energy and magnetism that she can help transform this by shining a light in the dark spaces and helping those who need more education. We are educational broadcasting. That means we have the mission of educating through the auspices of broadcasting. And we're going to do that. Your leadership is committed to that, and Randall is committed to that. And that's where we're going, and that's what we're going to do. Does anybody have any, any other comments they'd like to bring up or like to make? Thank you, Mike, for those comments. Uh, the next item on our agenda, I would like to say I am going to ask for a motion to go into executive session regarding personnel issues. Um, so that would take a motion to, to go into executive session. So moved. Need a second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed the same. We will be going into the executive session. Is there a, do they have the? Yes, yeah, so everyone that's on the call, um, please uh, hang up from this.